people say, Holy, Holy, Holy. And the people say, Holy, Holy, Holy. And the people say, Holy, Holy, Holy. Is the Lord God. things are happening in the spirit hallelujah remarkable things happening in the spirit why do we need the spirit of revelations Romans 11 verse 33 we are going to pray we are still praying Romans 11 why do we need the manifestation of the spirit of revelation Romans chapter 11. He says, Oh, the depth of the riches, both of the wisdom and the knowledge of God. He says, How what? Unsearchable are his judgments and his ways past or beyond finding out. God surrounds himself with mysteries like chariots. And it takes the agency of the spirit of revelation to help us understand this mystery deity and tap from his wisdom to reign. He says, oh, the depth, the dimension of the mysteries that are contained in God. He says, how unsearchable are his judgments and his ways past finding out. But the Bible says, no man knows what is in the spirit of a man, except the spirit of that man. He says, so also, no man knows the mind of God, what is in his spirit, except the spirit of God. He says, the spirit has the ability to search as deep as it is. He has capacity to search. And he can search and reveal it to the saints. Listen, let me tell you something. Divine strategies, divine secrets, we call them mysteries. That's the key that has turned ordinary men to wonders. Something about the operation of the kingdom. As big as any door it is, it requires a key for it to open. A door can be locked as big as it is if the key is missing. You can roam around that place forever. Hallelujah. It takes the key. And we are going to be praying very briefly. Men and women of God have been here leading us very powerfully. But I want your eyes to be open to something. And I pray that God will grant you grace to see. You see, what you hear is information. You don't see information. When your eye sees it, it's no longer information. Because the eye is the light of the body, not ear. 
He said, I will stand upon my watch. Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 1. He says, and I will set myself upon the tower and I will see what the Lord will say. That's revelation. When you can see what God is saying, it has entered your spirit. You can hear what he is saying and not change. But when you see it, you must change. Hmm. Hallelujah. We are going to pray. I have been praying seriously that we will comprehend the gravity and the necessity for the manifestation of the spirit of revelation in our lives. I said it yesterday. Revelation is, you see, one of the things I've seen in the body of Christ, and I'm and, and part of it, but I've seen the folly of men. The Bible says, ever learning, but never coming to the knowledge of the truth. We think revelation is accumulation of many things somebody else does not know. So our, our pursuit is to accumulate as many strange opinions that are known only by a few people. And we call it revelation. No, sir. Revelation, listen to me. Revelation is not just an information that only a few people know. No. That's not revelation. Revelation is not even knowing what God has said. I said it yesterday. If you know what God has said, brothers and sisters, and you cannot make it work in your life, it is useless. We keep mocking ourselves with information that has no power for manifestation. There are many pastors who can tell you they know everything about church growth. They know everything about healing, everything about miracles. The end of revelation is not that you know it, that your life becomes a testament of its reality. Hallelujah. So it's not enough to just know, oh, I know this, I know this. Is it working in your life? Is it working? Is it producing results in your life? I'd like you to be frustrated in a positive way tonight. Let, let an anger rise from you and say, Lord, something I know is mocking your grace in my life. I claim to know this. It's not working. It's not working. I claim I have so way. But at every weather blows a little, I'm a victim of everything. No, 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 no. Is it a lie? There is a reality of the life of God. You see, one of the greatest frustrations in the body of Christ is that we are carrying scriptures, which is okay. But we do not stay with the spirit to open us up to the mystery. So we have many scriptures. We quote it and recite it and gather accolades to ourselves we cannot defend. So lots of people say this guy can quote scripture. But there's nothing in our lives that show the reality. Let me tell you one result will answer a thousand questions. I know this. I believe in results. I have no business participating in anything that does not have the capacity. He says, so therefore let your light so shine, not your explanation. Let your light so shine before men. I want them to see it. For herein is your father glorified when you bear much fruit. Hallelujah. Two things I'm going to share with us very quickly. You want the spirit of revelation to come upon your heart. You can sit down, please. We are going to rise up to pray. I just want to. I was searching the scripture. And just asking the Lord what he would put in my heart. As I admonish us. Please pay attention. You will never encounter the spirit of revelation. Listen. Listen. When there is no willingness. You see. Most people mock God. We think God is, is just a stupid person who doesn't have anything to do in heaven. Is there a willingness in your heart to walk in the truth thereof? Hallelujah. John 7, verse 17. Media, you help us. We'll look at a few scriptures. I found this scripture very interesting. John 7, verse 17. Everyone read if you can. It's projected. One to read. If any man will do his will, he shall know of the doctrine, whether it be of God or whether I speak of myself. He said, if any man will, once your will is there, the revelation will be given to you. There is no commitment 
in many believers to grow. There is no commitment to do great things for the kingdom. Therefore, there is no need for the manifestation of the spirit of revelation. Because the spirit of revelation shows you certain things to the end that you will do something with it. Hallelujah. The willingness to obey attracts the spirit of revelation. The willingness to obey, not the willingness to know. The willingness to obey. The Lord, as you show me, and that grace for performance comes, I kick into action immediately. God will always give us revelations and cry that we do something with it. It's not enough to know a truth and keep it there and it does not bless you. Matthew 25. Matthew 25. The Bible tells us a very interesting... Um, when you read from verse 14 to 30, the parable, popular story, the parable of the talent, right? The Bible says he gave unto one, you know, all kinds of talents. And the Bible says he gave one five, listen, he gave one two, he gave one one. The Bible says they went immediately and traded it. Are we together? What did they do? Immediately, when they got it, they swung into action. And they brought forth results. The one with five brought five more. The one with two brought two more. But one held the revelation. And he was just moving around with it. And after a while, the master came and said, Okay, I've come for accountability because I want to improve you. I want to promote you. The one with five, who made it ten? He said, well done. The one with two, who made it four? Well done. Listen to what the last person said. I know you are a hard man. You like reaping where you did it so. So I thought I would just bury it. You bury seeds, not talents. When you bury seeds, they will grow. When you bury talents, they become useless and unprofitable. And he was angry. And hear what the Bible says. He collected the talent from the one and took it and gave someone. This is the mystery in the kingdom. The more you appreciate revelations and receive them, the more you qualify yourself for more. You, you peg the limit of the access of the spirit of revelation in your life with disobedience and refusal to act. Your journey into the mysteries of the kingdom is at the mercy of what you know so far. God watches it. Because he said, gather the crumbs. Let there be no waste. Gather the crumbs. I showed you something about a key that can supernaturally bring sinners. You ignored it. You played around with it. But you are looking for the mysteries that bring church growth. And God says, no, your heart is not right. I gave you a dimension of revelation. It was mismanaged. Several people want Rema, and I'll tell you why. I've taught here again and again. The reason is because in the body of Christ, we have this childish attitude of gathering crowns for ourselves based on our ability to compare scripture with scripture. So the pursuit of many people into the mysteries of God is to have something to defend their ministry. They are not interested whether or not results come. So when Benga comes up and preaches and bombards everybody with mysteries, and then Pastor Alpha and Pastor Femi, they are now nodding and saying, Man, this guy is deep. No. Revelation is more than that. You cannot want revelation to use it to cover your inferiority. It's more than that. It's God speaking to us now. That's why a lot of people want it so that when you go to a church and they say, Okay, just. Can you just um, share, give us something, maybe a little charge, greet the people and collect offering. So instead of going to a, the popular scripture, you now say go to the book of Revelations and they say just for offering. And you are happy. And you derive a sense of honor and God is watching. He's saying I gave you something that can change a destiny. And you bring it and tie it down just to, to massage your ego before men. He said, they comparing themselves with themselves are not wise. Revelation is more than. So that we don't make God look like a charmer or a magician, like a jelly that will twist his hand and use. Is your heart committed to obey? When God gives me a revelation, I hold on to it. The word of the Lord came to me some years ago. He said, if you will let men see me, 
There is nothing I will not give you. So your willingness to obey. But well, let me show you two very quick mysteries. I pray that the Lord will open your eyes. Keys that can attract the manifestation of the spirit of revelation. Just two of them. Number one, Songs of Solomon chapter 5 verse 2. If you want to be a man of deep mysteries, listen, surrender your night time to God. Are you hearing what I'm telling you? What I'm teaching you is very deep. Dedicate your night time. I don't mean don't sleep. Just say, Lord, once it is night and the sun goes down, I dedicate this time for encounters. He says, I sleep, but my heart wakes. My body may lie down and sleep, but my spirit is waiting. Like a watchman, I expect you to come. I expect you to show up in my room. I expect to wake up in the morning, writing. Ask everyone who knows me. I sleep with my Bible, notebook, biro, my phone. I expect mysteries to wake me up. Dedicate your night time. Listen, great men of the spirit understand the mystery of the night. The Bible says, and then the secret was shown unto Daniel in the vision of the night, not the vision of the afternoon. The night time is the time when men see. The night time is the time when men see. One more scripture. Job 33. Job 33. We'll look at 15 and 16. The Bible talks about Job, the greatest man from the east. Right? Let's look at something Job said. One to read. 15 and 16. is projected. One to read. In a dream, in a vision of the night, when deep sleep falleth upon men, in slumberings upon my bed, what happens? Then he opened the ears of men and sealed their instructions. Listen, there are encounters when you go to sleep in the night. Strange things happen on earth. The same way alien spirits and demons come and sow seeds. Many things happen in the night. Listen, many great people have been cheated, not discerning the mystery of the night. Did you know in the spirit, you measure a whole day beginning from the night, not morning, and the evening came and the morning was the first day. And the evening came and the morning was the second day. People die in the night. Somebody who had enough faith to stand in the afternoon, by night, something happens. It's not just the absence of light. There is a mystery of the night time. Everyone who prays seriously will tell you there is grace to pray in the night. Are we together now? Dedicate your night to God. I've done this in my life. I'm telling you, there is almost no night that I don't have an encounter. Some sort, if it's not a direct encounter with God, some kind of scripture. I can play, I have the whole Bible on my phone. I can find a chapter, put it on repeat, and put it on my ears. The, the thing looking for rest is not my spirit, it's my body. And the scripture playing will not interrupt the body from sleeping. So body, you can sleep while the spirit continues. How many of you have had times when you are sleeping and what you were listening to continues in your sleep? And you begin to live it like a vision. The same way it was at the same time, your ears, you are on the bed sleeping, but in that vision. And Jesus was at Gennesaret and you are there. Those encounters, you wake up with surges of power running down from your head to toe. You think you just had a nice nap. But when you continue, one day you begin to see possibilities activated in your life. Because strange encounters sacrifice your nighttime people of God to God. By sacrifice your nighttime, I don't just mean wake up in the night and pray, although that's wonderful. But I'm saying dedicate your night time. That whether awake or asleep is like a, a covenant with God. You are saying, Lord, my night time belongs to you. 
it all belongs to you. Oh, it all belongs to me. It all belongs to you. Every time I go to sleep, I know that revelation is coming. Sometimes, even before I sleep, the presence of God is already filling the place. And I just sleep under that atmosphere. Strange encounters. Oh, King, don't be hasty in what you want to do. Give us time. You just had a dream, no interpretation. You want to kill everybody. No. Allow us. And Daniel went. There was a God that reveals secret. But things don't just happen. You see, when we don't understand the way spiritual things are regulated, we mock ourselves. God is almighty. But his presence is not manifested anytime, anywhere, the way you want. There is a protocol, even to the coming of his presence. The Bible says, then the vision was revealed. In the night time, when all the noise of unbelief, all the people that jam the spiritual atmosphere with unbelief have gone to bed. Revelations. Sometimes you will wake you and you just stand and sit down like a zombie. You can't pray, you can't read your Bible, but you are just silent. You don't even know what is happening to you. After one hour, you sleep back. You thought you were just watching, but there was a transfer, like from a filling station to you. It will take days before you understand what just happened to you that night. You just know that you woke up and you could not sleep. You were watching, you seemed restless. Because the language of God, I've taught here and I've taught in the school of ministry, the language of God is not English, it's not French, it's not Greek, it's not Hebrew. The language of God is light. And when that light comes to you, sometimes it will take a while. That's what happens to some of you when you fall under the anointing. It's not every falling under the anointing that is impartation as it were. Or maybe demons going out. There are times what throws you down is the word of God to your spirit. He said the voice of God upon the waters is mighty. But it will take a while. Like a snake that swallows an animal. And then you begin to see it unfold. We are going to pray. One more mystery. Psalm 49 verse 4 something I've known for a few years and has blessed my life. This is the reason why you find out that every time we pray, we create an atmosphere of worship. Psalms 49 verse 4. Everyone read please. I will incline my ear to a parable. It says, I will open my dark sayings upon the harp. That means anywhere I begin to hear sounds of music and worship, it will attract the spirit of revelation. The prophet knew this, right? He said, bring me a mystery. I need to see, I, I need to know what is happening. But bring me a mystery. The Bible says, the moment he was playing, the hand of the Lord came upon him. And he said, Fill these ditches with water. I say you may not see wind. You may not see rain. But the valley shall be filled with water. Listen. Surround your time with God. Soak it with worship. Sometimes you need to just allow worship. Just play. In 2005 I did a strong research. Jewish worship and the mystery of God's presence. Searching for what it was in these Jewish songs. And the presence of God. I found a lot of things I cannot share for time's sake. But we are going to pray. A prayer of dedication of our night time to God. And say, Lord, beginning from tonight, I surrender my night time forever to you. That you will open me up to tremendous mysteries. Divine secrets. And you are going to pray and say, Lord, ride on the wings of my worship. Can we rise up very quickly and pray? Say after me in the name of Jesus. Shout it in the name of Jesus. Oh Lord. I dedicate my night time. Up to you. Visit me. Whether asleep or awake. Give me revelations. Show me divine secrets. 
Show me divine strategies. Lift your voice and begin to pray. Visit me, O God. Visit me, O God. Visit me, O God. Please make sure you are praying in the night time. When men go to bed, I keep my spirit alive to receive from you strategies for business, strategies for ministry, strategies for marriage. Oh, receive it from the realm of the spirit. Divine solutions, strategies to issues of concern. Of concern. Are you praying? Lord, reveal that which I need to do in the night vision. As I sleep, let me see. As I sleep, let me see. I come for the spirit of revelation through the mystery of the night. Through the mystery of the night. Through the mystery of the night. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I like us to pray and say, Lord, every mystery you have shown me so far that I have ignored, remind me and grant me grace to obey. Lift your voice and pray. Every mystery that has been shared upon this altar, every truth you have shown me, and out of carelessness, I ignored it. Out of carelessness. I refuse to act upon it. You showed me what will make my children better. I ignored it. You showed me what will bring prosperity to my life. I ignored it. You showed me what will keep me long and healthy. I ignored it. Remind me by your spirit and grant me grace to walk in it. Pray. Grace for obedience. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. See, it's not what you do that makes you prosper. It's how you do it. There is a way God can show you. Do A and B and C. And it will take you from one dimension to another. Please hear me. It's not doing things that brings results. It is the revelation behind what is being done. Everybody opens a shop. You can open it the way you want. But God can tell you no. This is a secret I give you. It may not work for anybody, but I give you. He said, where fell the axe head? And they showed him. And for that condition, the secret was to carry a stick. It was never done anywhere again. And he threw it, and the axe head floated. You are going to pray and say, Lord, what is the strategy to come out of my predicament? Show me this night. Lift your voice and pray. Please pray, pray. Lord, there is a strategy. There is a strategy to pay that rent. There is a strategy to take that business to the next level. There is a strategy for my church to expand. There is a strategy for my finances to change. There is a strategy for my prayer life to jump back to life. There is a strategy. Open my eyes. Open my eyes. Open my eyes. Open my eyes. Open my eyes by the spirit of revelation. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen. Everything you have 
is enough if you know what to do with it. Did you hear what I said? Everything you have is enough if you know what to do with it. The Bible says there was five loaves and two fish. Jesus knew what to do with it to feed 5,000 people. Sometimes what you need is not more. What you need is strategy. Strategy. Business people hear me. You need strategy. You do things foolishly, jack of all trade, master of none. You will crash your life. You need strategy. Pastors, you need strategy. All this copy and paste thing people do. Because others are doing it, you do it to know. He says, thou shalt hear a voice from behind saying, this is the way. Walk in it. We are going to pray one more time. And say, Lord, show me something applicable to my own life and destiny. What is the strategy for my marriage? What is the strategy for my finances? What is the strategy? Please lift your voice and pray. What is the strategy for my ministry? What is the strategy for my business? Reveal it to me, O God. Reveal it to me. Divine strategies. Keys of the kingdom. Keys of the kingdom. Divine strategies. Keys of the kingdom. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When you know what to do, it will end stagnation in your life forever. But if you do not know what to do, you can remain in a position for a long time. You can pray, but you need strategies. It was David Yongi Cho who was crying that God would show him the keys of church growth and God opened his eyes to the concept of self fellowship many men of God carried it hook line and sinker without revelation and split their churches into pieces because it came by light the Bible says right prosperously because of truth not because of desire because of truth hallelujah was Bishop Wedeko who was sharing that the Lord gave him a revelation about corporate tithing, right? From Hebrews 7 verse 7. That and without contradiction, the lesser is blessed of the greater. There are strategies. A man can be grounded for many years, but one key will open you up. I've shared with you my, my, my story. From the scripture, God told me, said, um, how did he put it now? Um, to be good to everyone, he said, For in it, many of you have entertained angels unaware. I saw that scripture and it entered my spirit as light. And one time, there were women, I was buying sugar cane, and there were two women, strange women, who were also buying sugar cane. And it was in my spirit, based on the light of that scripture, just bless them. And I said, Mama, you people, don't worry, you don't have to pay, I'll pay for you. And they were looking at me, trying to lose their this thing that they put money in. and I think it was 59 or so I gave them and these women started blessing me they were blessed you know how these people bless honestly whether they were human beings or angels I do not know they were blessing me but of all that they said I, I didn't remember but I know one of the women spoke to me and said my son forever walk upon gold that was what she said to me. forever walk upon What you see is a mystery. I've, I read many books on church growth. And I appreciated the revelation, but truly did not connect to my spirit. And I said, Lord, show me. Give me the revelation for this ministry. Mark chapter 1, 2, 3. My goodness. When God opened my eyes, he said, Jesus was in the wilderness. Men came. He went on the mountain top. Men came. There was a mystery. He said it was noise abroad that Jesus was in town. 
who did the publicity remain a mystery and it entered my spirit it was noised abroad they met jesus and they said all men seek for thee it may not work for someone else but that's a revelation that's what i told you it's not what you do it's the light that backs what you do someone may refuse now and say koinonia doesn't do any publicity and people come and you may not publicize your program and you will see empty pews all around because i'm not against publicity every man works on the authority of the lights that came for him he said and god made two great lights one to rule the day and the other to rule the night and the lord taught me that there is a kind of revelation that you need in times of pain hardship and obscurity it's called the night time there is a the light that rules in the day may not be the same pattern in the night and so you must sustain ability to survive whether in the daytime when things are working well or in the night time that's why when whether people cry in session whether they cry whatever there is a light that rules in the night when you read a bible story and it ends as a story you just had information but when something rises from scripture and it is opened up to you utopian enoch said the, 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 the Philip asked him, he said, Understand what thou readest. Do you understand? He was reading, but he did not understand. The Bible says, He breathed upon them. He opened their understanding. The last prayer, Father, open my understanding. Open my understanding. I'm tired of reading the Bible like a storybook. Open my understanding. Please lift your voice and pray. Open my understanding. Open my understanding. Open my understanding. In the name of Jesus. He said, in all thy getting, get understanding. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Before I speak over your life, please bring out your prayer requests. Oh, 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 o
is lifted high. For those who are just coming tonight, I want you to understand the revelation of what we are doing. The Bible says how that Hezekiah made the request bare. There are two requests we have, we have before the Lord. The first is the request of our expectations. All the things we want the Lord to do for us on the positive. The second represents our challenges. Everything that has mocked the name of the Lord. Please feel free to collect even that of your loved ones. And the Lord said, every day I should speak over it. Hallelujah. He said, I prophesied as I was commanded, not as I wanted, as I, as I was commanded. In the name that is above all names, I pray. Father, you are not a man that you should lie, nor the son of man that you should repent. You have instructed us and we are childlike enough to obey you. I speak over every request, every expectation. The Bible says that our expectations will not be cut short. I'm praying. Let miracles begin to happen on those lists. Let miracles begin to happen on those lists. In the name of Jesus Christ. Worthy is the Lamb who by his being slain has received for us wisdom. Every strategy you need to answer some of these requests, receive it this night. I prophesy visions. I prophesy revelations. I prophesy dreams that will tell you what to do in the name of Jesus. No matter how impossible the expectation is, because you have faith for it, I declare, may it become yours. May it become yours. May it become yours. In the name of Jesus, may it become yours. He said, that which we have heard, we first heard it, then we saw it, then our hands handled it. You have heard it, you have seen it, I command your hands to handle it. In the name of Jesus, I command your hands to handle it. The Bible says, the word became flesh and dwelt among men and we beheld his glory. The answer that has been hanging in the realm of the spirit, it must become flesh and appear before men. It must become flesh and appear before men. In the name of Jesus Christ. Every challenge you are lifting, you have cried about it. Your family members have cried about it. It has brought tears to your eyes. The Bible says we do not have a high priest. Who has not been touched with the feelings of our infirmity and praying in the name of Jesus? Every spirit behind the tragedy that is lifted, I'm not speaking to the request first, the spirit behind the, tra the tragedy, this night we release the fire of judgment. Hear me. If there is any human agent, Behind the tears on that list, this night, in the name that is above the, all names, we command judgment. We command judgment. He said, Pharaoh will not let you go except by a strong hand. In the name of Jesus, whoever has refused to let you go, to turn that challenge to a testimony and pray in this night. He said, if you do not release me, I will take your own firstborn. Whoever has taken what is yours, I will not release it. We seize their peace tonight. We seize their peace tonight. In the name of Jesus. And at night, the king could not sleep for the sake of Daniel. Early in the morning, he went. He said, Daniel, has a God whom you serve kept? He said, oh, leave king. He said he has sent angels. I pray. Angels can be sent to rescue, but they can send to punish. Angels use hailstone and stone people with it until they release the destiny of God's people. I pray. Whatever must happen for your testimony to manifest, we permit it to happen this night. In the name of Jesus, whatever must happen for your testimony to manifest, 
We release it to happen. Yeah. Hallelujah. He said, I will overturn. 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 I will keep overturning until it gets to your place. I don't care how many times God must move in that family. Even if he has done it before, my God, do it again till it gets to your turn. May God do it again till it gets to your turn. Every negative report, we change it tonight. Every verdict, listen, any man threatening you, hear me, Every man was a baby in the hands of a woman one day. Ask Pharaoh. God knows how to humble men. Every dagon standing to mock your God as represented in the challenges you have written. The same way dagon fell before the ark. May that challenge fall tonight. May that challenge fall tonight. Hallelujah. While I was preparing for this meeting, I got a very humorous text from, I think it was the assistant MD who couldn't make it today. I'm sure tomorrow he will share it. He said he had been praying and praying, they have been trusting the dad for a car. And humanly speaking, it may not be easy to get that car made financially. I think his parents are missionaries. And he said just yesterday, somebody walked up to the father and gave him a brand new jeep. Brand new. It's not of him that will it. Nor of him that run it. But of the Lord that showed mercy. That you don't know the road does not mean it's not here. I'm praying for you again. In the name of Jesus. Whatever your eyes must see. To solve these problems. May it be revealed to you this night. There are some of you the solution. To your problems. Is in the account of somebody. The solution to your cry. Is in the endorsement of somebody. The solution to that jobless situation. It is within the power. He say, I am also a man under authority. I have a jurisdiction and I have influence. I'm praying. Whoever needs to show up to help you. He said a man was crippled and could not help himself. But he said some men carried him. Tore the sink and brought him down. Whoever needs to carry you from where you are. Whoever needs to come in for your family. Whoever needs to show up in your destiny, wherever they are this night, in the name of Jesus, they will see you in their dreams. They will see themselves helping you. Please believe what I'm saying. They will see themselves blessing you financially. The Lord will instruct them in the night. And they will be compelled to obey. Listen. You have been begging some of them. They are not responding. Now we ask God by revelation. Since you have begged, begged, begged and they won't listen. I pray for you. Through their dreams, may they see themselves helping you. As a confirmation that they are your helpers. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Please sit down very quickly. Let's write the prophetic focus for tomorrow. Hallelujah. John 12, please, 24. Let's establish the prophetic focus for tomorrow. Don't miss tomorrow. I'll be teaching you something very powerful. You'll keep progressing every day. God is showing us mysteries. I'd like us to read, everybody who want to read. Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a corn of wheat falls to the ground and die, it abided alone. But if he die, he bringeth forth much fruit. Tomorrow we are going to be examining the mystery of sacrifice. Our prayer. I'm going to be showing you how it must take sacrifice in the spirit for a man to go up. I'm not talking money. You must give up something to go up. It's a law. You cannot hold on to what you have and still rise. So our prayer tomorrow is going to be, Lord, grace for sacrifice. We hate this language in the body of Christ because many of us think when we talk sacrifice, you are trying to add to what Jesus has done. There is nothing that is of worth. Nothing that is of worth. Listen, the birth of anything valuable is painful. Anything valuable. Many people have not understood this law of sacrifice. 
It has grounded lives, grounded ministries, grounded businesses, grounded all kinds of things. He said, except, except it falls and dies. When you bury a seed or plant a seed, the first thing that happens to that seed is that it dies. When it dies, it doesn't fear anything again. Because the last enemy to be defeated is death. I will show you the mystery behind the boldness of many people. is because they have died. There is a way God chills your fear by exposing you to it. And what made you cry yesterday, you will walk through it. You no longer will have fear. Sometimes God does not take it away. He brings it face to face with you. And you will find out that every challenge comes in his magnified form. When you stand and face it, it's smaller than it looks. Rise up on your feet. Tomorrow the Lord will help us on that. In the name of Jesus Christ. We, are, we apologize for the communion. We may just take it on Friday. Please, before we leave, I, I just like us to appreciate a dear um, woman. She's been here. She would not want me to do that, but I promised I was going to do it today. I'd like us to appreciate Madam Ladi. Um, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Prof, my God bless you. Thank you so much. Um, every time she comes, she hides. And sometimes she can rush to Kaduna for lecture. Those who are in mass come, you know her. She's your lecturer. Um, she can run for lectures and still run back to make sure that she meets the meeting. And she will hide somewhere and say she doesn't want to be known. She's been teaching me Hebrew. And um, she taught me some things I'm going to share with you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So thank you so much, Mark. We appreciate you. The Lord honor you. Let's honor her. And again, every other person. Hallelujah. There are a lot of elderly people, some lecturers. They can just come hide outside. Wherever you are, we honor you and we bless you in the name of Jesus. Lift your hands as I speak over your life. Yes, Lord, we believe you. You have waited three days laboring in the spirit and fasting. The Bible says meditate upon these things. He said give yourself wholly to them that your profiting will appear unto all men. I'm praying between tonight and tomorrow may your results begin to bear fruit. Let it, let it be evident. May your life begin to bear fruit. In the name of Jesus Christ. I pray for you. The reward of your fasting, your praying, your stretching in the spirit, we pull it from the realm of the spirit and command it to appear in the face of God. The same way you rejoice over the testimony of some of the testimony of somebody, tomorrow may you be the one to stand here. In the name of Jesus Christ. A mark of honor, a mark of favor, a mark of wisdom, a mark upon your life that makes you an epistle of this fasting and prayer session. May it come upon you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. I pray that as you move in your room and around, anything that is not of God, just by stepping in, may your atmosphere judge anything that is not of God. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. For those of you who are already weary, we supply fresh grace. Fresh grace for fasting. Fresh grace for prayer. In the name of Jesus Christ. Did you get the scripture? The mystery of sacrifice, Psalm 50 verse 5. Please write down the scripture, sorry. Psalm 50 verse 5. John 12, 24. And 2 Corinthians 4, 12. Your prayer focus will be on grace. I will be, please don't miss what, don't miss tomorrow's teaching. I will take some little time to teach. I want to share with you from my personal life and certain deep secrets that produce uncommon results. Psalms 50 verse 5. John 12 verse 24. 2 Corinthians 4 verse 12 The focus is the mystery of sacrifice You are praying for grace We are going to be teaching 
unveiling the mystery of death and glory. I'm going to be showing you the relationship between death and glory. You must pass through that cross to ever get to the throne. There is no way to the throne. When you pray for breakthrough, Goliath is coming. Without Goliath, there is no throne. And I will show you that it is weak people who do not have challenges in their lives. It is weak people. Those who follow the path of least resistance are the ones who are at the lower levels in life. Tomorrow I will be challenging you. It takes you losing something to go up. Hallelujah. You must give up something. The Bible says, whosoever keeps his life will lose it. But whosoever loses it shall gain it. It's a mystery. Father, we give you all the praise. In the name of Jesus Christ. As you depart, my God will bless you. You will meet people in your various places that will bless you. In the name of Jesus Christ. After the grace, I'd like you to hug 20 people and tell them we are going from glory to glory. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit. All is wonderful day.
Take my body, my soul, my spirit, breathe on me. You are the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost. Take your place, take your place. Just the voices. Take your place tonight. Take your place. Take your place. Take your place. Lord Jesus, take your place. In the midst of your people, we have nothing to say until you speak to us. We ask you tonight in the name of Jesus, take your place. Only your presence brings freshness. Only your presence brings illumination. Oh, take a hold of my spirit, my soul, my body, my intellect. I align, I align, I yield myself. Take a hold of my body, my spirit, my soul, my faculties. May they come under the influence of the Holy Spirit. May they come under the influence of the mighty one. Sing in the spirit. Make melodies from your inner man. Oh, 
Let this place be a habitation for your presence. Let this be a tabernacle of your glory. Let this be a place of encounter. Let it remain a place of deep encounter. Koinonia, the place of encounter. Koinonia, the place of illumination. Just keep worshiping. There's something about the presence of God. When you see that we keep singing like this, it's because the Holy Spirit is doing something. Whenever he stands you, you hook on to what he's doing and you don't rest. Please help me sound. Just a song that I heard in my spirit now. Oh, oh. Say who means. Voices. Yeah. Yeah. My God. 
goodness. This is a sound in the spirit, I tell you. It's like a frequency, a radio frequency. The spirit of prophecy is in this place. saying my glory will I share with no man I share my glory with no man this honor no man takes to himself I will do a walk in your midst here the spirit of the Lord and it will be swift it will be swift I will do a walk in you and it will be swift I will make you the tabernacle of my glory here the spirit of the Lord I will do a walk in you and it will be swift. I will do a walk in you and it will be swift. Through the ashes and through the pain, I birth my glory in you, say the Spirit of the Lord. Through the ashes and through the pain, I birth my glory in you. Through the ashes and through the pain, I bring upon you new mantles. I bring upon you new graces. Yeah. prophecy is falling on people right now right now right now I see it like like a cloth like a garment is a spiritual garment is falling on people right now the spirit of prophecy yeah. Yeah. even outside I see it like a garment falling on people yeah. of prophecy yeah. is like a garment men and women are wearing that garment right now yeah.
this is a prophetic word to the worship team new songs from heaven say the spirit of god new songs upon our worship team new songs upon our worship team is coming like mantles upon your spirit it's like radio waves into your spirit man worship team radio waves you will bet songs in the spirit 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 songs in the spirit you will hear them in the night time as you sleep you will hear them in the morning you will hear the voice of angels they will sing those songs and you will pick those signals they are songs of new seasons they are melodies of victory they are songs of triumph they are songs that speak the language of victory they are songs that empower the saints they open them to new dimensions in the spirit they are songs of the lamb they are songs of the lion they are songs from heaven they are sounds of the spirit yeah. says I'm announcing to you that seasons of victory are ahead the Lord says I'm announcing to you that seasons of victory are ahead beyond the shadows are new realms of victory beyond the pain are new dimensions of triumph beyond the shadows are new levels of grace for you will sing this song in the days to come say the Spirit of the Lord they are sounds of victory only the victorious can sing this song they are melodies of triumph they are melodies of victory say in the spirit of the lord yeah. 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 the Lord says remember not the former things nor consider the things of old weep not for I bring you new joy say the spirit of the Lord I bring to an end your season of weeping I bring to an end your season of weeping you may not know how it will happen but I will move by my wisdom say the spirit of the Lord you do not need to know how it will happen for it will be swift and it will be strange say the spirit of the Lord you may not know how it will happen, but it will be a move of the spirit. And like the twinkling of an eye, I will put a melody upon your lips. A song of victory. A song of victory. A song of victory. Yeah. say unto you remember not the former things nor consider the things of old forget about the pain of the past for the glory that is before you is greater than the pain of the past it has been a season of birthing say the spirit of the lord have i not said as soon as zion travails she shall put forth a son you have been in a season of birthing the pains are for a reason the pains are building strength in you to contend with the seasons of glory that are ahead 
Weep not, my child, say the Spirit of the Lord. Weep not, for the lamentations of yesterday will be a sound you will hear no more in your destiny. For the lamentations of yesterday will be a sound you will hear no more. Yeah. Yeah. Rejoice for your salvation, draw it nigh. Say in the spirit of the Lord, rejoice for your salvation, draw it nigh. Rejoice for your salvation, draw it nigh. I say again, it will be swift. It will be swift. Like the twinkling of an eye, it will be swift. rise from your spirit go ahead make those melodies to him in the spirit let the melodies rise it's an incense of worship it's an incense of worship hallelujah i see the angels of the lord chariots fighting battles this is what i see in the realm of the spirit i see battles contentions i see a mighty warfare going on in the realm of the spirit a warfare for the new levels i see the arsenals of hell being torn down and i hear the saints with tears in their eyes shouting the song of the lamb and the song of victory just keep soaking in the glory there is warfare going in the realm of the spirit don't think you are wasting your time something is happening in the realm of the spirit Oh, let the redeemed of the Lord say so.
nations will worship your majesty. Creation will worship you. Creation will worship the creation. the voices the nations the nation will worship will worship creation will worship creation will worship his majesty sing it the nations will worship It's unto you, O oh God. It's unto you. Let this rise as an incense of worship. mighty presence of God in this place there is a strong manifestation of the spirit of prophecy many of you will begin to prophesy 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 it's a strong unction of the spirit it's not the programming of the flesh it's by the strength of the spirit yourself that all you get in God's presence is just the word worship teaching then you share the grace 
you must always come into God's presence expecting him to move in any way and to do anything believe me you may not know the kinds of activations that are happening to people right now in this place see church is not designed just to be a place where you come and sit down and watch people and laugh there are times that all you need is to come and press into an encounter that you step out of that meeting and all of a sudden your sensitivity something has happened all of a sudden you find out that the burdens are lifted all of a sudden you find out that the chains are broken all of a sudden you find out that the power that comes from the throne does something to your life this is what his presence does see that all of a sudden in that atmosphere when the spirit of prophecy the bible says the testimony of jesus every time the true spirit of prophecy comes into a place all of a sudden the spirit of god meeting the needs of people touching people challenging people opening them up explaining to you your encounters of the secret place showing you why the things that happen happen giving meaning to your encounters this is the only way church will not be boring yeah, 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 yeah. listen all I'm seeing in the spirit is light light falling on people that's all I'm seeing it's an illumination strong impartation of light that's what is happening all over the building God is opening the eyes of men giving explanations for some of you the light that is coming is direction strange direction by the spirit Some of you, this light that is coming is answered prayers. That's the answer to prayers. Coming as that light from the throne. Listen, let me tell you something. Many of us have robbed the Holy Spirit from finding expression. Some of these songs you see me coming, bringing from the Spirit. Many of us, God has been wanting to pass through you. But this rigidity we put, there is, there is a sense of religion. I am busy trying to make money, trying to read books, trying to be successful. We, our spirits are not malleable enough for the Holy Spirit to pass through us. The restraint is too much. That's why we don't get this sound. That's why our discernment is very low. Because we are busy. It takes, it takes staying in the presence. Let me tell the truth. You will never touch certain frequencies in the spirit when you are busy around trying to combine spirituality and many other things. The presence of God is a full-time assignment. You must stay. Stay until the sound comes. Stay until the melodies come. Stay until the power comes. For when he comes, he comes with light. For when he comes, he comes with ease. For when he comes, 
he comes with illumination many of you have been praying oh lord take me to a new level it's not just by prayer stay in the presence stay in the glory that's the key that's the secret it's not just moving around no the glory doesn't just fall overnight when you stay your spirit man begins to acclimatize to the frequency of the spirit that's how it works it's not a hit and run thing you just rush and come out and then you want to hear with accuracy then you want his glory to flow it doesn't work like that there is a there is a staying there is a staying i tell you it's a law you must stay the church has learned to hurry god and we are hurrying the glory of god out of our lives there are many of you here listen when you started out with god you had the time and the staying power but i don't know what it is that has happened god is challenging us that secret place is now a strange place for many of us we are busy doing ministry we are busy trying to make a living we are busy trying to move around the church has lost the art of the secret place the secret place is not a place it's a place where you stay like a waiter stay until his glory comes and then when his glory comes there is a signature upon your life undeniable the secret place is the place of power the secret place is the place where you have a message if God does not sit upon you with his glory you have no message you can talk it's not about Rema it's about the presence that follows it you can preach all you can but there is a glory this is a testament of his visitation upon your life that's what creates impact that's what breaks chains I like you to pray and say Lord show me your glory greater levels of your glory please pray expose me to that realm superior dimensions of your glory I have tasted of your glory I have seen what your grace can do but Lord there is a desperation within my spirit to taste of something tangible sit down if you can for those who can sit there will be many impartations the spirit of prophecy is strong in this place night Some of you will never recover from tonight's meeting. I tell you, you will not even know what is happening to you. It's an encounter. Listen, listen. If you're a man of God in this place, I submit to you. You are wasting the time of God's people if you cannot convey the presence to that atmosphere. Yeah. That's how habits are broken. That's how chains are broken. That's how impartations happen. It's not just by laying on of hands. How many people can you lay your hands on? Let the glory come and there is transformation. Let the glory come and something is happening in people. Let the glory come and testimonies, sicknesses. Many of you are sitting down right now and sicknesses will just disappear. No, it can't stand the glory. Prayer lives have been revived different dimensions of the spirit that's why the place is called koinonia it's not a place of discussion 
it's an atmosphere of encounter Lord, let nothing restrain your hand in the midst of your people. Let nothing restrain your hand. Don't rob God from finding a vessel in you. Don't rob God from finding a truly anointed vessel in you. See, let me tell you something. If you follow these rubbish people are doing of just visiting God's presence to come and receive breakthrough and prosperity and power and rush back, you will never find God that way. Please believe me when I tell you this. God is not an object you use. You see that? There are some of us, our gifts are dormant for a very long time. Very long time. That press in the spirit to activate you listen it's an anomaly when you remain in the same spiritual level for a very long time something is wrong and when you are rising it's obvious everybody knows that there is a transition some of us are in the same position for a very long time because we are giving God barely enough see that there are some of us our dreams have ceased our visions have ceased. Our encounters have ceased. Our passion for his glory has ceased. Listen, every time the experience you used to have with God ceases, something stopped it. It never stops by default. Are we together now? There are many of us, you used to see things before they happen. Right now, it has dried up out of nothing because you are trying to look for a wife or look for a husband. Hallelujah. Dry up. There's nothing there again. No power. No grace. All these things we keep making noise around it in church. One person falls down. One person falls down and we jump around. That's nonsense. There are higher dimensions. There are superior levels in the spirit. Beyond calling names and phone numbers. There is the spirit, not the gift of prophecy. There is the very spirit of it. The very oppression of the prophetic realm. Where people receive testimonies of Jesus without you speaking any message. The spirit of prophecy. Men live with encounters they cannot explain. No matter how hardened you are, when you come into this atmosphere, something must surrender. That's what happens when his presence comes. You cannot change men by the excellency of persuasions. No. It doesn't work that way. The presence. That's what brings transformation. The presence. That's what brings change. There's nothing mysterious about it. It's only a price that very few desire to pay. Because we like things cheap. We like things easy anything that commits us we do not want we want results but we hate process or we want to be mightily used you want to stand and see the glory of god move around brother there is a price it's not a gift it's a reward it's a reward for diligence it's a reward for surrender it's a reward for total yieldedness i used to hear benny Hinn say it total yieldedness that's the price for the anointing. Total yieldedness. Not half-hearted yieldedness. How many musicians are here? You have not brought one song from the spirit. It's, it's, a, it's an indictment on your call. It's an indictment of, on your gift. There are melodies in the spirit like waves. But there is a frequency with which your spirit must rise to. And then you will capture this thing. The, the level of the sophistication of your spirit is the level to which you will capture. 
Many of us, our prayer lives have died, gone cold, gone cold, gone cold. You only pray until you feel tired. See, let me tell you why many of us, our prayer lives are not effective. We are only praying to justify prayer. You don't pray for the purpose of touching realities in the spirit. You see that? Yes, at, you can pray and then after one hour or two hours, you can say, I have tried. That's a different, you are only praying to be better than somebody else. But there is a way you come with a desperation. And you pray that your spirit will make contact. If that contact happens in 10 minutes, you end. If that contact happens in 5 hours, you continue. See, it's not about religion. But it starts with a desperation. A desperation. A desire. The first message the Lord is communicating tonight is let there be a revival in your spirit, man. Get back those mantles and those gifts wherever you threw them. Let those dreams come alive again. Because in those dreams are the puzzles of your destiny. A little here, a little there. Before the year runs out, we're going to take a teaching on angels and the ministry of angels. You see, many of us have lost touch with spiritual reality. It's dangerous in this time and age to just move sensually. That the limit of your perception is a three-dimensional realm. You will be a victim of too many things. You've got to access a frequency that is higher than the material realm. To supply you the strength and the illumination. Hallelujah. I challenge everyone here. There is more that God can do with your life. If you will give him space. God is not a boyfriend. He's not a girlfriend. He's not looking for an affair. He wants a relationship. A very serious one. You give God an affair, you will get nothing out of it. If God is one of the many important things in your life, believe me, you will never find him. Believe me, you will never find him. Listen, listen. This desire is not for men of God. This desire is for everyone who wants God. Don't you think that this bias is for pastors? No, no. The spirit of man was designed to only find satisfaction in his presence. Nothing in this world will satisfy. Oh, Jesus, you're the cup that pulls you on dry. Nothing in this world will satisfy. Jesus, you're the cup that won't dry. Your presence is there. Sing it just one more time. Your presence, Your presence is heaven. Is heaven to me. Your presence is heaven to Your me. Welcome everyone. This is Koinonia. God bless you especially for our visitors and many who are coming for the first time. The Lord will bless you in the name of Jesus Christ. Now today our meeting will be very different. We are going to take, I'll respond to a few questions and answers. Praise the Lord. The Holy Spirit put it in my heart. There are so many of us that have questions about the Holy Spirit, about encounters spiritual growth will give us an opportunity maybe 30 minutes and then i'll just minister to people 
there are people who need to be ministered to and so that's what we're going to do help us with another mic please um now i know that please listen many of us have questions especially as regards intimacy encounters our spiritual lives i'm trusting that god will grant grace we we'll use all the questions as a message and just communicate it and please i want you to feel free make sure that you ask questions that are applicable to our spiritual growth not just something that is a bias for some of us is something regards prayer your prayer life um your word life if there's no mic you can i can take one and then you can use this hallelujah and so um because it's not only important to teach there are some of us who have encountered certain challenges maybe in the dispensing of the gift of the spirit in our lives or anything that has to do with the holy spirit and intimacy and our spiritual growth and i'm trusting that god will grant us um a few minutes that's deliverance happening to her something is leaving her that devil of darkness leave her right now in the name of jesus christ there's one other lady with this same situation right now in this place the power of god is coming upon her this is a spirit that has been tormenting her lord wherever that lady is right now i declare deliverance by the power of the holy spirit that lady is in the congregation here in the name of jesus christ it's like fire that will come upon you i judge that spirit in the name of the lord jesus christ right now i decree judgment i pass a note of judgment to that wicked spirit that is bringing oppression praise the lord so we're going to have a little q and a and i'll respond and maybe uh, on one or two occasions we can allow one or two people to respond the questions will bless many of us because it will answer it will attempt to answer or solve some of the puzzles that are around our lives i don't want our spiritual lives to be um without accuracy some of us may have been making the same mistake for a long time that's why we are not getting certain results spiritually hallelujah some of us may be pressing into god for instance there are people who press into god but necessarily they find out that they are always backsliding not that they are sleeping around or doing anything immoral but that staying power is like there is a spiritual meter every time you get to a dimension it pulls you back you are making progress but the graph is not straight it's like it goes up forces you down then you have to pray and fast your way there are many of us who do not know how to command strength in the spirit like a gentleman who uh, i think someone sent me a text i don't know if he's here he sent me a text in the afternoon um, and he said every time he's in the presence of god or anytime he's talking to people about the glory of god he starts yawning mysteriously like yawning and um, some of you are already nodding in agreement it's happening to me too what is the meaning of that <laughs> are you yawning out demons are you absorbing the glory what exactly is happening so um please be smart don't be rude to the protocol people just walk as they direct you we're going to have a few questions um i will use the questions some of the questions will actually culminate to teachings and i'll use the opportunity and just address things don't be biased make sure that you ask things that are relevant if your question is not relevant to our meeting we ignore it is that all right let's pray in one minute and say father speak to me go ahead and pray thank you jesus hallelujah praise the lord okay so um we'll come in threes we'll just have the first three they will stand and then if there's any need so let me see by wave of hands i'll point people out okay number one you can stand up come second number two and then um let's have a lady figure all right that lady waving her hands in blue come quickly appreciate them as they come be smart tell us your name straight to the point 
if you're wasting our time please we'll, we'll send you to your seat let me tell you in advance so you are not embarrassed go ahead turn to the congregation god bless you go ahead okay good evening sir is it working yes sir um good evening sir thank you yes, bless sir. you yes sir my question is um about visions visions yes sir what, what are they visions okay yes sir what are they and are visions a sign of spiritual growth that's um like spiritual visions are they limited to a particular set of people people who do not have them as frequently as are they growing? yes are they is it a sign that they are growing okay i, I want to visions are a dimension of supernatural encounters right um, there are many levels dimensions and types of supernatural encounters visions are just um, a dimension of supernatural encounters that affords a person an opportunity to access realities in the spirit it could be realities that reveal the past the present or the future you understand it could also be realities that expose that person to um, spiritual happenings now the whole goal of visions and, and i want us to pay attention the whole goal of visions and encounters any supernatural encounter is prophetic in its dimension are we together now so every time we talk of prophecy it's not just speaking any encounter that exposes you to access any realm beyond the physical is a prophetic dimension so in every man there is a prophetic dimension let me call it a latent prophetic dimension now those who are called into the prophetic or apostolic office the advantage of the apostolic office is that on the strength of that office you can work you should work in all the fivefold offices because it's an administrative office it heads and coordinates the spiritual activities are we together now but in a typical prophetic office by default the moment you there is an election of grace upon you incline towards that prophetic office there are it's like spiritual configurations by default are we together now now your spiritual life and your spiritual growth can add to it but anybody called into the prophetic office or any dimension of prophetic operations by default can be open to the realm of the spirit that's why you can find people seeing visions who are not born again are we together now remember he told jeremiah the prophet he said while you were in your mother's womb i had already called you and ordained you to be a prophet are, are we clear now so visions and generally all supernatural encounters are a dimension of the prophetic and the goal of visions dreams is illumination and direction sometimes also impartation it gives you illumination access to light and information right sometimes it gives you direction but in many cases it also comes with impartation that's why some of us can have dreams have visions encounters we don't exactly know why they came but they leave residues of impartations as we get up and begin our normal life we see that certain possibilities in the spirit has been activated and we may not know at what point it was activated like wisdom like certain virtues do you understand so now but that does not mean listen if you are truly growing spiritually right even if you are not called into the prophetic dimension or prophetic realm if you are growing spiritually the the presence of god has a prophetic effect on everyone whether you're a prophet or not this is the reason why somebody on the strength of sheer intimacy with the holy spirit can access a level that will make him look like a prophet but in reality he's not a prophet he's just one who has pressed into god to an appreciable dimension it's like an aura of god's presence now the bible does not use visions and dreams to qualify spiritual growth although experience has shown us that as you progress spiritually you will begin to um, get impulses it's called spiritual perception in fact i preached a message on that you can get it with the media after the service are we are we understanding now because there are some of us here who are praying we love god but aside from dreams and maybe what we call intuition what people like kenneth hagen will call the knowing of the spirit we've not had any 
supernatural encounter as it were and sometimes we get intimidated and i think i must correct that because some of us get intimidated because someone is now talking and saying um um Ogashew saw something and he's prophesying and he's saying oh i saw something and you you are standing frustrated that you do not have visionary encounters in terms of um encounters you are awake you are alive and you are caught up or a picture comes before you or the audible voice of god or some kind of supernatural encounters it does not mean you are not growing spiritually are we together now there are two spiritual indices to measure spiritual growth number one is your degree of conformity into the image of the christ that's the first biblical sign of spiritual growth so if you are born again and there is no transformation in you you are not conforming to the image of christ believe me your salvation is questionable in fact let me let me press on this before we continue there are many people who think they are born again and and please i don't want you to doubt your salvation but i must be sincere with you there are many people who think they are born again and i tell you the truth by the lord they are not they are not saved the meaning of that is if they die today they are going to hell are we together now please don't don't trivialize salvation salvation is the is the supplanting of the very life of god in a mortal man are we together the bible says you are born of the incorruptible seed remember of the word of god so there is a seed the same way a man plants a seed in his wife what do you expect that seed to do there should be fertilization is that true and eventually as time progresses that seed right begins to produce so you cannot tell me you are born again listen that you are born again the life of christ is in you and you are exposed to the atmosphere of the spirit and progressively we do not see after a prolonged period of time evidences of conformity to the image of christ something is wrong with that salvation are we together now so it's very very important so that's one index the second index is your degree of comprehension the degree to which you are having understanding on the principles and the mysteries of the kingdom so that your degree of conformity to what degree do i see christ in you in fact paul puts it this way he said my little children of whom i travail until christ be formed in you he was talking to people who were already saved so conformity to the image of Christ and access to the principles and the mysteries of the kingdom. These two will naturally produce empowerment, impartation, access to the anointing. Are we together now? So that's it about vision. God bless you. Yes, sir. I appreciate you, sir. Sir, I want to know... Well, What's your name? My name is Oko Sampotensi. Okay, yes. When um, you, there is a signal that an attack is coming on your spiritual life, and you you pray against it but then actually you are going down spiritually sorry again you're going down spiritually your spiritual life you are going down spiritually yeah kind of you have an attack is coming on your spiritual life and then you attack from hell construct your question pray, very logical so that everybody prayer, prayer life for instance is your going prayer down life is going down yes and then you you pray you pray against it then a time comes that what the very incidents that causes you to go down finally happens although you prayed against it and it, it happens to um you you feel that okay you failed and then the spirit comes to um encourage you that as if it's it, it is it was proposed by god okay so what is the question so now? my question now is uh, when are, are those attacks actually and after the attack you grow higher are those attacks actually um ingredients to for you to grow spiritually to live you the level it, you are you mean a demonic attack uh, on your spiritual life for instance okay um his, his question has many sides to it i'm not getting exactly what he's asking but if i understand you well you mean your prayer life is going down yes are we together yes and then what happens there is a there, there is even a, there is a knowing in you that there, there that, is an attack yes a demonic attack on yes, your life yes okay and then for instance there is maybe a habit god has delivered you from and then there is a knowing that 
um, it's coming back or something. The devil wants to bring and it you back. Pray, yeah. And you pray against it, let it not be, let it not be and Lord. Then it still happens. And then it happens. Okay. Then you feel like it's men, it's gone. Then there is an encouragement that as if this thing is proposed and then after that you feel a lifting higher. Okay. I think I get what you're saying. No, 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 no. It's not a habit is not proposed to lift you up spiritually. What you see is an interplay of your carelessness and the mercy of God and the grace of God. There are many things interwoven. So you don't justify that because you grew from it. It meant God brought it. Now we must understand that there are different attributes of God that um, it is part of the love of God. Now love in the spirit is not affection. Love in the spirit is a realm with many dimensions. There is a dimension of love called discipline. There is a dimension of love called judgment. There is a dimension of love called mercy. There is a dimension of love called justice. Are we together? That's why Paul says to know the length, the breadth, and he, he gives love a dimension. So when we say the love of God comes to you, it can come as his goodness. It has, can come as his chastisement. Are we together? It can come as his mercy. Now you are a believer. Number one, we have to examine what made your prayer life to go down. Right? There are two reasons why your prayer life can go down. Number one, it can be the natural fatigue that comes from the spirit and the flesh contending together. According to Galatians chapter 5 verse 16. It says, this I say then, walk ye in the spirit and you shall not gratify the desires of the flesh. Right? So it says the flesh lusteth after the spirit. The spirit after the flesh and there is a contention. You get up in the morning. I mean, there are ladies to resist. There is beer to cast away. There, there are all kinds of things to happen. There is bribery and corruption to run away from. At the end of it, after a while, it's like, it's like wear and tear. Your spirit can be fatigued. That's not backsliding. That's simply a tiring because of your faculties that help you interact with the spirit. At that point, the solution is a retreat. Isaiah 40 verse 31. Even the young men can be weary. They can faint. All right? Then, but they that wait upon the Lord. But in a situation where it is an attack, which often happens, there are three seasons where Satan attacks people. Number one, at the birthing of something new. The moment there is something new about to happen in your life, part of the many events that happen is a strange attack that has nothing to do with your spiritual life. You read the Bible and you find out it's not unusual. Right? Very, very important. There is always a strange attack. Revelations. I saw a mystery. A woman who was carrying a man-child about to give birth to that child and a dragon came and stood waiting for the child to come so that she will eat. Now, Satan tries to stop you at the time of sowing your seeds. Any kind of seed. Spiritual seed. If he cannot stop it, he will try to stop the gestation period by bringing impatience, taking advantage of your human nature that hope deferred makes the heart weary. Are we together now? And if you cannot stop it, then he will wait for you at the point of harvest so that he will abort the harvest. These are the three seasons and stages of Satan's attack. So before you start ministry, look at that. He did it to Moses. Stage one, when Moses was about to be birthed and conceived they wanted to kill all the people so to abort the destiny from day one now that it did not happen he wanted to implicate moses and he caused moses to kill somebody so that it will affect him the process and then eventually towards the end of his life he used anger and stopped him from entering so there are three stages of satan's attack are we together we see that even in the life of jesus Jesus about to be born, his star shines in the east. Wise men follow him. Herod wants to kill him. Are we together? Then later on again, we see that through the process, after his baptism, Satan comes to wait for him. And then he tries to jeopardize his destiny by telling him, I'll give you the kingdom, bow down. And since he refused, and then he tried and tried and tried, all through the lifetime of Jesus, Satan could not get him. And then the last stage was in hell. When Jesus was preparing to defeat all the cohorts of hell and come out, all the demons and the principalities were on him to force him to bow. And then he rose up and you know that when Jesus was about to resurrect, what happened? They paid some people to lie. 
even when he resurrected he they guarded the place and when he resurrected they paid some people they said go and lie that the disciples came and stole his body so we see that there are seasons you can actually discern seasons where you know you are liable to attacks except you do not have spiritual intelligence now satan i'm using this are, are we getting blessed is god speaking to us satan is not omniscient there are three attributes that make god sovereign number one is his omnipresence his ability to be everywhere satan is not everywhere job 1 verse 1 from whence comest thou later on you read from running to and fro god doesn't run to and fro his eyes can see everything the all-seeing eyes of god are we together now number two he's omniscience his ability to know all things satan does not know all things he works with informations that's why he uses human agents to probe into people that's why satan pursued prophets because he wanted to hear what god was telling them are we together now very important and then number three his omnipotence his ability to have all power once have i spoken twice have we heard that all power belongs to the lord now satan does not have these attributes are we together so satan can discern seasons of breakthrough in your life and that season is usually communicated in the spirit by unusual angelic activities satan was once a cherub and so he understands remember when jacob slept right when you read genesis 28 when jacob slept he saw a ladder there were unusual activities happening are we together now the same thing jesus told nathaniel in john chapter one he said you will see many things you see the heavens open and all of that so what happens is that at a point where the devil sees that there are unusual activities or prophecy has revealed what god is about to do that's why when prophecy comes that's not the time to cross your leg paul spoke to his son timothy he said this charge i give unto you my son timothy that you war a good warfare with the prophecies because prophecy is an announcement it's an unveiling the moment the voice of god prophetically spoke john said behold the lamb and a voice said this is my beloved son satan started chasing him are we together now so when there is an attack it usually is that god is, is trying to do something in your life and satan is trying to raise a counter attack at that point if you understand the mysteries of the kingdom there is a secret to tap into a higher supply of grace are you following me now and that's the power of a retreat isaiah chapter 40 verse 31 they that wait the moment you sense that there is a lot of boisterous activities in your life and you will know it by the intuition of the spirit some of you will see it in dreams some of you will have it in visions some of you prophecies will come to you and many of us who are used to rejecting prophecy now prophecy must not be exalted above the word of god however it's important to many times pay attention to it especially when it's coming from vessels that know god and are credible it's important to pay attention praise the lord very very important so when there is an attack and it is a demonic attack if it prevails over you an attack is inevitable on the saints and it's not a surprising thing the surprise however is when satan prevails are we together now because even in heaven there was war the bible said there was war in heaven that that dragon lucifer he rose an archangel michael also rose but satan prevailed not there was no place found for him and he was casted to the earth and there was a lamentation woe to the inhabitants of the earth you know satan that old serpent he has come with anger and great fury are we together now so if there is an attack an affliction the secret is prayer and it's in a secret place so if your prayer life died it's because you did not build momentum before that time are we together that's the reason why it is important for every believer to have what we call it's like a spiritual bank it's like an energy bank so your daily prayer the bible says redeeming the time that's the mystery there are two words that are used time in the greek there is chronos and there is kairos chronos is the passage of time kairos is an opportune time or a set time the bible uses these two words in the book of psalms it said thou shall arise and have mercy upon zion 
for the time chronos to favor her yea the kairos when you translate it to hebrew the set time are we together now so there is a set time an opportune time where major things happen between heaven there is serious business between you and heaven and at that time the devil knows and he will launch attacks so what you do is you build a spiritual fortification both spiritual intelligence and capacity in the place of prayer so that at such time it will sustain you the bible says if you turn aside in the day of battle what was wrong your strength your spiritual strength now is small so if you fell in that attack it's because your strength was small are we together let's assume let's use something maybe pornography are we together now and it's something god had delivered you from and you sense that the devil is trying to drive you again into porn, uh, pornography are we together now and then you fell to it that falling is not a test that falling is not the furnace of affliction we're talking about that you fell simply because your spirit did not sustain the strength and the energy to scale through but then in the midst of it the dimension of god's love called mercy comes in so don't confuse it that because you learned more from that situation it means it was god that orchestrated it god simply took advantage of it and allowed his mercy to prevail so that in your rising you will now rise better stronger and more anointed this is what makes god love are you getting it now but that does not mean god intended for you to necessarily fall the falling is simply the limitation of your spirit man i don't know if you understand what i'm saying yes sorry uh, this is there are many people if yeah. you ask two two questions please if you come out after two questions you go and sit down and hope that somebody will ask your question are we together yeah um, this has been happening i will see some things i won't i will not know how to inquire for the meaning and when it happens later sometimes they are not good at times it pos it's positive you will what sorry see for instance you will see yeah, things yeah, visions yeah. yes now like there was a time i saw myself traveling with a lady and when it came i didn't understand what it meant when it came traveling with a lady uh, to, a, a vision. To, to a place yes when it to came where? to a place i didn't know we are going okay, to a place. okay no so location the, okay. the reality was that the person was under attack and i was the one to lead her to the prayer place i'm uh, not just and that, that oh, was you where, held and you were taking her yeah, to a place okay that's where she got her this but i didn't understand the meaning then now recently i saw a, a lady my cosmate um, pick a bag and was traveling i didn't know what it meant the next day uh she actually told me she was she was traveling to a place i said what for say somebody just died there now i understood that and uh, maybe we were if we had prayed about the journey and all of that if it was a bad one so how does one my question is how would one be uh, how would one know the meaning of the pictures you are seeing at the time of the vision to help your direction in prayers okay god bless you now there are two things here that our attempt to respond to i, I don't know if we understand his question but um after this we'll take three people from outside before we continue so protocol help us we'll get the three people from outside who have questions please you see how time is going if you come and you ask a question that doesn't make sense we have agreed as a congregation that we're sending you back please we intend to grow and we want to redeem the time are we together so please before you come make sure you are prepared not to disgrace yourself are we together ask questions seek counsel with your neighbor whether your question is constructive enough yes yes please please so that you don't you don't come out here and and waste our time but the gentleman was saying something that I consider to be important. Now, I think the biggest error in the prophetic is lack of spiritual growth to contend for accurate interpretation. The problem with the prophetic or visionary encounters usually, three of us can see the same thing in the spirit, but it does not mean the same for all three of us. Are we together? Now, that's the problem I have with books that say, if you see a chain, it means oppression. What if it's a chain watch? that I saw what if it's a, a necklace to mean an ornament of royalty you can't just say I saw a chain it means I'm under attack I, I remember a lady years ago who was pressing into God and when she got to that dimension she she a, another lady had a dream about her and saw her naked and came and met her 
and started lambasting her and said, you are walking in immorality. What kind of nonsense life is this? You are giving us an impression like you are serious with God. Now your secret has been revealed. And the lady was depressed and she came and met me. That, that nakedness was a message in the spirit that she was becoming intimate with the spirit. But it was wrongly interpreted. Three of us can see a finger in the spirit. For one, it means warning. Stop what you are doing. For another man, one, it means direction. Come up here. Are we together? For another, it means I am blessing the works of your hands. We all saw the same thing. So it is wrong. Remember in the interpretation of the dream of, of, of Joseph and the wine presser and baker, all of them saw three, three things. Three baskets, three this. He interpreted for the first one and he was happy. Then the other one said, me too, I have my own. He said, in three days they will hang you. And this is established. And they hung him after three days. Are we together? So, stop going around with predefined prophetic interpretations. You only make certain prophetic interpretations predefined. If the character of their operation has been established in the world. For instance, anywhere you see a dove is a representation of the manifestation of the Holy Spirit. Anywhere. It's a spiritual symbol that the Spirit of God has associated himself with. Except if you see a dove and you see it oscillating, that's, a, that's deception, for instance. Because according to the scriptures, the enemy can parade himself as an angel of light. Are we together now? So, it is true that there are certain default symbols that help us communicate with visionary encounters. But not just that you see... You can see a woman in the spirit. You can see yourself moving with a woman. And you may think that God is punishing you from lo or lost. A woman in the spirit is a gate. That woman you are seeing could be that you are entering a new season. Are you seeing now? But because you do not sustain that spiritual intelligence, you go around casting something you should be prophesying to come. And, and all of that. So I think... Um, for the gentleman, I think I've been able to help him. I, I hope that I got his question correctly. If I didn't, I'm, I'm so sorry. Praise God. Yes, my dear. Praise God. Permit me to say this there first. That it's an honor to finally meet you after listening to your message for a very long time. God bless you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. I, I'm very Thank happy you. I'm here tonight. You're my welcome. question is to Baruch Itku. The first question is... What do you do as a person when you're struggling with spiritual growth? Today you are up, tomorrow you are Spiritual growth. Uh, does Watch. it mean that um, it's like a graph that you'll be going zigzag, zigzag till you get to that final slope? Uh, or okay. is it that you question just stop? Two. The second question is, you're talking about dream and vision. In my lodge, we had a case where someone said he had a dream, blah, 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 blah. And it's really caused a big advocate in my lodge. Today. Look at the congregation. Okay. It's, it's really caused a big advocate in my lodge. I'm asking the question that... Does he had a dream about the lodge or something? About the sister, that the sister came to seduce him, blah, blah, blah. And everybody was now calling the sister a witch. That as, does it mean that all dreams come from God? Okay. When we see dreams, does it mean that everything is, we see, it is coming from God? Okay. Thank you very much. God bless you, my dear. Um, her first question was, sometimes they should not go immediately so that they can remind me in case I've lost, um, I'm interpreting them with my spirit, so my mind is hardly here. Um, her first question was what? Up, up and down. Okay, okay, listen, listen, listen. Listen, please. What does the Bible say? The path of the just is like a shining light that does what? shines brighter and brighter onto the perfect day now there is a difference between spiritual fatigue and backsliding i think i've, I've cleared i've cleared that all right for as long as you are wearing this body the limitations of carrying up mortality right the concept of immortality is a concept that is accessible but immortality is not an impartation immortality is the resultant effect of accessing light from the spirit because the bible says as we behold him we are changed now the problem usually is that our lifetime and our level of regeneration is so slow that our lifetime will not be able to help us change that fast that's why we die are we together now but it is possible that a man can contend for that dimension enoch did it elijah did it 
So we know that it's possible to live bodily, although in a glorified form, out of this earth. Moses didn't do it um, and all of that, but at least we have two witnesses, two evidences in the Bible that they were able to access that. So when you find yourself, see, and, and this is, her question is very instrumental to your spiritual health. If you are sick and you don't know, how many of you have seen people in the village who are sick, they don't even know? To them, they are healthy. You just test them and say, Mr. Man, you have malaria plus plus, and yet the person is playing football. You not, now tell the person, go to the hospital. That's how many people are spiritually. And for me, your spiritual life is tested based on your passion for God. There are certain things that start happening in your life that you know there is danger. Number one, your prayer life. Your, when your prayer life is, is nose diving, don't ever pretend that it's a dimension of growth. You are backsliding immediately. Once your prayer life is going down, don't let Satan fool you and say you are just in a season where uh, God doesn't want you to say anything or this and that and that. Be very careful because it could be deception to destroy you. Your spiritual life. Number two, your passion for the word. Number three, your passion for the house of God. Number four, I want to call it your, your sense of morality. It's important. If all of a sudden I sit down and I find out that I start lusting after you. Call me apostle, call me whatever. I'm lusting after you. I came for Koinonia, I saw you. Abel is preaching, Cain is there disturbing his mind. What do you think I'll do? It will be stupid for me to wear suit again and come back. I will use the week to flog out that element of the flesh that is growing. Many of us ignore those promptings until it grows to a point where it backfires, obviously. That's when we start crashing in. The moment, see, the Bible says, let sin have no place. Don't give the devil a foothold. The moment you find out that there is a place, there, is, there are certain things you are bending on your values. You don't pray for three days or four days. You feel all right. Very, very all right. You carry your Bible and there is no zeal to read. Sometimes it could be in the presence of God, you'll be able to find out whether it's spiritual fatigue or it is backsliding. Are we together? But ultimately, the difference between spiritual fatigue and backsliding is that under spiritual fatigue, your passion is still there. It's just the zeal and the strength to press through that is not there. But under backsliding, your zeal and your passion dies. Are, are we together now? For the, our brother that saw a vision that a lady is seducing him, um, that's, that's wrong. You see, this, this is the problem we have when we live in Christian communities because people wake up with all kinds of things. I spoke to you about interpretation. This brother may be a sincere person. Maybe he's here. We are not creating fight. Are, are we together? You don't know whether he followed you. For Koinonia. You said he's in your lodge. Now, the point is this. It is wrong. You see, prophecy and, in the, realm of, and the realm of the spirit also depends on your mental renewal for correct interpretation. Are we together? I can guarantee you that this brother's spiritual paradigm fundamentally is faulty. For him to see an innocent lady and call her a witch to say, is he the only person in the lodge? You'll be surprised it's not even maybe the most handsome or something. So, um, it's, it's a wrong paradigm. Now, you point, do you know another thing? It is possible that I can go to bed and see Shal Homer chasing me, maybe with a stick in a dream. Are we together now? And all of a sudden, I wake up and I say, I saw Shal Homer chasing me and it's welfare that cooks for me. I put two and two together and I say, my life is under, I'm in danger. I mean, and then I now dissolve koinonia welfare because they are trying to destroy Apostle Joshua Selman. Some of you, you have that paradigm. Now, it can happen. A possibility exists that such kinds of things happen. I mean, in the house of God, there are all kinds of things. But then I'm saying that your interpretation primarily should not be that because he saw a lady. If he does not understand, seek counsel. There are there are spiritual puzzles that we put together. You must let scripture interpret your encounters. Are we together now? I mean, in the Bible, women seduce men. What was the progression of the seduction? Samson was seduced. 
Are we together? Who again was seduced in the Bible? Huh? Job was not seduced. Who? Joseph was seduced. Some of you are saying, Job, look at how your poor by please. How about this is Koinonia? Don't we are Bible people? How, Job was never seduced. The only woman with him was his wife. Please don't go and say that anywhere. It's very bad. Are, are we together now, my dear? So that 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 teaching, even if it was true, this is what I would have done. If I had a dream and you pursue me, or you are trying to sleep with me or something in a dream right even if it was your face it's wrong to get up and call you a witch do you know because you don't know what spiritual challenges she's facing you now get up and you now call her a witch three situations would help to interpret that number one it could be that there is a spiritual operation around your life and your family that births seduction it can be true are we together that you as a person you are not bad but it's possible that you are being influenced by the spirit of lust or because of the background you are coming from. And so it will happen in the similitude of your face, disturbing that person. Are we together now? And so you will feel bad. Number two, it can be the spirit of confusion. The devil masquerading to now cause confusion. Are we together? So he will now use your face, just like you saw your father quarreling you. You saw your mother caught beating you. You just got up and said your mother is a witch. Anybody, whether my father or my mother, I'm, the, the woman is innocent. You find out that we keep calling people witches and wizards who have no business with witchcraft. However, 80% of them are being influenced by spirits that operate in the character of what they were accused of. You see that? So, um, whoever he called a witch, I can guarantee you is not a witch. Please, she left her father's house to also come and do NYC. She's not a witch. She may not be spiritually strong and all of that, but she's not a witch. It may be wrong. So go and comfort her. The brother, what he saw, when you have encounters, you are not guaranteed to have interpretation for them. But one thing you can do is blast in tongues sufficiently until your spirit man gives you a note of peace. At that point, you know that whatever is the issue, whether calling it forth or driving it away, it has been settled. It is for that cause the Spirit of God makes intercession for us. I cannot tell you that every encounter I've had, I've had interpretation for. In fact, some of them may be years in the future. As I grow spiritually or I have other encounters that piece them up together, I now see the message. But in the interim, every time you wake up from an encounter, praying in the Spirit is the way forward. And you pray until there is that check in your spirit. That whatever it is it's been settled you understand so that's what you should do god bless you and increase you eh? okay Please, straight sir. to the point um we have okay let's have one or two more people two more people please if you are sure your question is really going to bless us we have a little time and do, please and please don't ask anything here that will waste our time are we together the gentleman uh, if your questions will be fast, I can listen to it and combine it. That gentleman, there's a lady in the background. You, sister, the one waving your hands, come. Um, have we had anybody outside? Okay, there's one person outside. Okay, one usher, come. You're a worker, we love you, come. Okay, so quickly. Good evening, sir. How are so you? a process whereby... Don't one... look at me. As you're saying it, look at the congregation. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Yes. In the process whereby someone is suffering from the lust of the flesh. Lust of the flesh. Yes. Example. What is lust of the flesh? For Immorality. example, masturbation. Okay. Or lesbianism. And you are praying. Praying in tongues. Pray. You are in the process of prayers. And you are still having the feelings. In the process of praying, oh, you are still struggling and struggling. You are trying to pray. The spirit is just trying and trying. So, sir. What do you What's do? the way forward? God bless you. Thank you. He's been very sincere. Look, let me tell you the truth. The goal of this question and answer session is to help us grow spiritually. There's nothing embarrassing about it. Praise God. There are people like that. In fact, I've seen people who are suffering from immorality or lust and they're on three days dry. On the third day, before they break with food, are we together now? The devil does some kind of things, positions, the same lady they used to sleep with and it happens again or internet pornography or whatever we've seen these kinds of cases so um 
Do you know what deliverance is? Deliverance is not just coughing out things and rolling around and pushing chairs and bringing people here. Deliverance is the spiritual mechanism with which a man is separated from a spirit or an influence over his life. Are we together now? There are three dimensions or three levels that access Satan in a man's life. Number one is called covenants. Covenants. It is usually the strongest of the three. Number two is disobedience or ignorance. Number two is ignorance. Then number three is disobedience. Now, the danger of covenant and ties is that your personal salvation does not take away the covenant that is in a territory. Are we together now? That is the reason why someone can be born again. There are still corrupt people in Nigeria. But are you corrupt? No. Are we together now? Nigeria is termed a corrupt nation. Yet there are righteous people who are true. Are we together now? The earth is the Lord. Yet they are still bombing children and disturbing people. So there are covenants. A covenant is a legal agreement between spirit entities and human beings or fellow human beings. Right? That either opens up access for good or of evil. Covenants have consequences. Right? They can, they can, they can transcend generations. So this is very important. That's why you find out that the classic sign of covenants is that there must be a pattern to it. The moment there is a covenant involved in any process, there is a pattern. If these three guys are brothers and you find out that Michael is very rich, Kenny is very rich, Promise is very rich, you see that pattern, there is a covenant that grants that access. Promise, very poor, Kenny, very poor, Michael, struggling. There is also a pattern. So, patterns are usually communications that the access point for the realm of the spirit in that situation is a covenant. So, you find out that a father is an armed robber. When he stole, his son did not know. Many years later, the son will also come and steal. Have you seen people like that? The same pattern that happened to their parents repeats themselves. Because the patterns are a spiritual formula. There is an enchantment like a spell that makes it happen. I know a lady who, who I, I think um, um, she got pregnant and the person who got her pregnant, I think was a man of God. Same thing happened to her mother. Same thing happened to her grandmother. One reverend in their village got the grandmother pregnant. Many years later, one, one evangelist or something got the mother pregnant. And then now one brother in a fellowship gets the lady pregnant. Now, that brother does not know the reverend that got uh, uh, um, grandma pregnant that time when she was young. But then, the truth remains that there is a pattern. Are, are we together? Are you getting it now? And I know that sometimes many of us are preached into believing they don't exist. And we try to explain them away. But the truth is, it's there. It can be dealt with. Potentially, the birth of Jesus gives us access to victory in this thing. But there is the experience of establishing that victory. Are we together? Number two is ignorance 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 grants access to demon spirits they manipulate on the ignorance of men and open them up to certain tragic manifestations then number three is disobedience you know it but your capacity to walk thereof in that obedience is not there so these are the three access points so if you find out that you are praying praying and fasting about the issue of lust or immorality or any entanglement and it's repeating itself. You need help. That's the reason why God puts um, gifts to the body. To be able to help. Right? Remember our teaching for this cause. Many are weak. Many are sick. And many do sleep. God has elected certain people in the body of Christ. And created platforms that can be able to help people deal with these things. That's why we organize miracle services. That's why we organize um, um, all kinds of meetings that's why when we come to God's presence like this we take our time to soak in the glory so that the presence and the power of God can come and then address some of these things so for that brother you may need help seek help look for an anointed man of God not just a counselor somebody with an anointing that has been demonstrated to produce results and it can help you praise God praise the Lord my name is Luke my name is Luke 
It's talking about the presence of God. Okay. Uh, I heard of your message you preach about doers of the world. Okay. And uh, you mentioned, I forgot the man name, but you say pursuer of, of the presence. When we pursue, how do one pursue the presence of God? And how do we abide in that presence of God? Like in Psalm 91 verse 1, when it says, He that dwells in the sacred place of the Most High. Sometimes I may get interpretation of that verse, but sometimes the interpretation does not suit me. So I'm asking that, how do one, what, do, what are the criteria for one to dwell in the presence of God and remain constant in the presence of God? Okay. There are parameters. Number one, you must consistently create an atmosphere. You see, I preached a message years ago called lo the law of atmosphere. Everything thrives based on the atmosphere created. The presence of God requires an atmosphere. The presence of God is invoked, just like you invoke spirits. There is an atmosphere that allows the presence of God to be made manifest. Are we together now? Worship is one key that opens up the presence of God. Your passion, your love towards God. In other words, you're prioritizing Him. Making Him your one and only and ultimate is one way to get the presence of God. Obedience in Scripture. He that keepeth my commands, John um, um, 16, 21, I think I'm right. Or 14, 21. He that keepeth my commands, he it is that loves me. And I will love him and my father will love him and we will come and manifest ourselves to him. So the love of God is very, very important. Yes, my dear. Praise God. I'm precious, Moses. Um, I want to ask her. Uh, um, there's this friend of mine that I was preaching to and um, she was telling me that there's no heaven that we are going to stay here there's no there's, heaven yes and there's no hell uh, okay. so now we're getting into I've, denominational and, okay um she was not I was not telling her there is the no story heaven. of uh, Lazarus and the rich man I now asked her that okay where did Lazarus went to and where was the rich man then she asked me to open to Revelation 21 verse 1 and after much argument, she was now asking me that in Revelation 21, he said, and I saw a new heaven and coming new down in here. And you know, she was now asking me that, okay, where is that new heaven and the new earth? And I didn't know what to really tell. I just kept quiet. I was confused in that aspect. God bless you. Um, I don't know if it's the millennial reign of Christ or... I understand. I don't really... You see, we labor day and night uh, contributing our quota to help believers become matured. Are we together? You make people become matured by giving them understanding. Now, before I answer, I, I don't mean in any way, I know that there are different denominations, different Christian sects with their understandings, about heaven and all of that and um, i'm not giving you a denominational opinion are we together now there are many instances in scripture that lets us know that there is heaven are we together now very very important i, I think that um, it doesn't make sense to begin to make all those arguments genesis 1 verse 1 the very first verse in the bible in the beginning god created what and the earth now i think that alone answers first verse first chapter in the whole bible in the beginning god created so don't say where is it created god created the heavens and notice he never said the heaven heavens different planes paul himself gave us an example he said he was caught up to the third heaven that means there are other dimensions the psalmist said the heaven of heavens belongs to the lord so we know that there are different planes but there is heaven hallelujah are we together now the bible says every good and perfect gift comes from above not just the sky are we together now acts chapter one when jesus was about to be taken when he lifted to heaven two angels appeared and told the people men and brethren why look ye you know this and that and that he said this same jesus is it not there? Acts chapter 1. Let's use it to answer. At least let's use the words of Jesus. Acts chapter 1 verse 1. Jesus is going to heaven now. And he's speaking to us. Or the angels are responding. Acts chapter 1. I, I don't want to quote it wrongly. Verse, verse 10. Verse 10. 
I know that when you read from verse 9, let's start from verse 9. It gives us an impression like he just vanished. He did not just vanish. A cloud received him. A cloud received him. And when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up and a cloud received him out of their sight. Verse 10, please, quickly. And while they looked steadfastly towards where? Heaven. As he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel. Verse, verse 11. Which he also said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, which is taken up from you, into where? Into where? So we know that heaven is the habitation. The heaven of heavens is where Jesus himself lives. There is a place, a spiritual location called heaven. It says, shall also come in like manner as ye have seen him go into where? Heaven. Are we together? So that issue of saying um, there is no heaven is not true. Please, the Bible does not negate that. The fact that there is heaven. The Bible clearly tells us in many instances, Old and New Testament, that there is heaven. Jesus himself, I want to give you the ultimate proof now. Jesus himself made us to know that there is heaven. In Matthew chapter 6, when he was teaching us how to pray, he said, our father who art where? He didn't say our father who art around. Our father who art in an exact location, heaven. From that point, we hallow your name. Your kingdom come. So please, let's rest this issue once and for all. There is a real place called heaven and, and um, there are people there right now. Are we together? And we hope that one day we'll join them. Now, what we need to explain is the fact that the Bible says the old heaven and the old earth will be rolled away like a curtain and then a new heaven and a new earth will come. It is true that that very habitation of God will eventually be transported back to this realm. But it won't be in the similitude of these three dimensions. So it's not like we're going to have another three-dimensional realm. No. There will be another atmosphere that comes to occupy this space. This is the sovereignty of God. This is part of the mysteries of the kingdom. Where this whole heaven and all earth will be rolled away to, frankly speaking, we don't know. The Bible does not reveal that. Uh, this is part of the information that is contained in the age to come. Are we together now? That's why there are ages to come that carry certain informations that are important for the saints. So there is heaven, my dear. And every time you preach to people and they argue with you, don't turn your evangelism into debate. Politely decline. You may look foolish. Don't say, no, I can't let this go like this. Let it go like that so that God will be glorified. Yes, my dear. Praise the Lord. My name is Christiana Kaduri. Thank you. My question is, uh, like somebody prophesied to you, you're going to marry a man of God. And you have been waiting. <laughs> okay. Many ladies are happy. Okay, let, let's get the question, please. And Someone prophesied to you. And nobody. And said you'll marry a pastor. Yes. And you have been waiting. And the person has been waiting because... One miracle service, I saw you, sir, you prophesied to one lady that she's going to marry a pastor. And one day again, I'm listening to one man of God. He was saying, anybody that prophesied, if he's a man of God, that the thing did not happen, continue waiting. Even when you die waiting, continue waiting. So, <laughs> I'm asking that, so, when somebody prophesied to you, you're going to marry a pastor, and the pastor is not coming, you continue waiting. What okay. to do? That's a very good question, I think. We can use it. It's not just prophesying about marriage. It could be about anything. Praise the Lord. Now, um, I, I understand what she's saying. And she's communicating probably the pain of a lot of people. Because over time, we men of God have spoken to people. And there are times that for others, the prophecy have even come with precise detail. You are going to marry a man called uh, Ebenezer. He's in media department. The day you will see him is wearing a white cloth, dark trouser, he's holding a camera. If he snaps you, just know. <laughs> now, come Ebenezer. Now, Ebenezer. Come now, Ebenezer. Now, Ebenezer, you now come for Koinonia. And Ebenezer is just snapping around and focuses on you. 
and your heart is beating it's true ebenezer snaps you and goes to marry somebody else are we together now and now you are waiting and you are frustrated now there are three things here i want to explain i know we have all loved but let's listen closely now the bible says that even the ministration of the gifts must be done according to the measure of grace are we together two of us can be prophets but the grace the access to authority and strength the spiritual ranking that authorizes us in the dispensing is like you have two doctors one is just doing his housemanship another one is doing another one is a consultant they are all called doctors but are they the same they are not the same at all are we together now this is how it is spiritually so when we when there is the ministration of the word notice sometimes when you see me wanting to talk to people i call people out by the spirit and i just keep quiet because of what the lord is communicating to me sometimes it's like a feedback mechanism i'm checking in my spirit to make sure that this is not an interplay of the flesh and to also make sure if god wants me to reveal it to them sometimes you see me and i talk to people i take away the mic because the information is very sensitive and may is something that can be embarrassing are we together now but let me tell you sincerely let me tell you this sincerely one thing i know about marriage and we have discussed that make reference to my message um challenging discussions on late marriage i think we touched that area where the issue of god said overrides the word of god the bible tells us hebrews chapter one god who in sundry times and diverse manners spake to us through the prophets has in this last day spoken to us through his son which he has appointed to be heir over all things and we know that that son is the living logos the word of god and so whether it is joshua selman i'm not telling you to doubt the word by the grace of god we press into the word of god to make sure that we bring accurate words and there is a track record you can follow up the things that have been prophesied over people some of them have come to pass some of them are already on the way praise the lord now um no matter what it is if a man of god gives you a prophetic word and after a season you do not for instance let's use marriage i prophesy to this lady now and i tell her a pastor is coming and michael comes to her and let's assume michael is just a businessman you know that the natural tendency is for her to drive him away and say please you are not a pastor um he may be a pastor when he marries her god didn't lie are we together but sometimes it can also be that there is need for a check in fact sincerely speaking let me tell you it is very it is very praiseworthy to go back to god again we have seen instances in the bible where god spoke and under certain circumstances he had to speak new things again are we together an example is isaiah 38 when he spoke to isaiah to speak to hezekiah remember that scripture he came and told him hezekiah put your house in order you will not recover from this sickness you are going to die are we bible students so when i hezekiah turned his face to the wall and invoked the mercy of god god sent isaiah again are we together to go back so there is a possibility it's not a doctrine but through scripture we see that there is a possibility um the alignment of man can make god say new things i'll give you an instance if this lady is your wife are we to um, example example if this lady is your wife i'm not showing you your wife if this lady is your wife of, of course let me just put a, a little word of blessing we are proud of our ladies and if i say it and god is is, is, is directing you there there's nothing wrong ladies you should give me a happy meal tomorrow <laughs> are we together but now this is the example if this is your wife truly truly and she says i'm not doing do you think god is going to yoke you and tell you you will not marry any anybody again because of her carelessness and disobedience are we together now god will not put you to ransom the same way 
If God calls you into ministry and you say no, will he force you? Will he kill you? The same way he, he tells you that you should surrender all to him. When you refuse, he will not force you. There's hellfire already to settle that issue. So he will not force you. Please, I want us to understand that the plans of God can change. It's his purposes that are eternal. This is a revelation that will deliver many of us right now. The plans of God can change. God planned that you fly Ari to Lagos. And something happens. God will tell you to enter if it's in a cheap transport. The plans have changed. But the destination is still Lagos. But when you sit down and say it must be Arik or it must be flight. Are we together now? In scripture again and again. For instance, do you know it was never God's desire for men to have earthly kings rule over them? When you read in the Bible, it was his desire that he remains their king. But the people out of anger and rebellion, they say give us a king. And God had to make prophet Samuel to go and anoint Saul, the son of Kish, to become a king. Are we together now? Yes. It was never even God's desire. Listen. It was never God's desire for David, for the tribe of David, to be the lineage with which Jesus will come. It was supposed to be Saul. Are we together? But Saul made a costly mistake that costed him that opportunity. Remember when he went and he was off. Um, giving the offering by himself they asked him to wait for the coming of the prophet but he could not wait because the people were murmuring and being a king he was not a priest are we together because in ancient times they were kings priests and prophets they operated in different dimensions occasionally the priests were also the prophets like we have in the case of samuel he was both a priest and a prophet are we together now and so in that incidence um, Saul now start he made sacrifices and while he finished Samuel just came and Samuel told him you have done foolishly he said if you had waited for me to come and offer the sacrifice God would have established your throne forever so it would not be the lion of the tribe of or, or the, the root of David it would now be the root of Saul Again, we see that the first person God called in the Bible was not Abraham. The first person God called in the Bible was his father, Terah. Terah was tired and he said, I'm not doing. And then God looked for Abraham. Are we together now? So that's very, very important. I think that um, we need to understand this. My, my dear, if, even if it's me that prophesied to you and you are tired, come and meet me. Come for counseling and say, let's, let's hear God. Let's pray about this issue again. Especially where there is a God-fearing, very serious and responsible brother who is ready to marry and is coming around you. You are hanging the person while waiting for the pastor to see if the pastor will come or not. Don't dilly dial. Find the man of God. If the person who prophesied to you is still within reach, find him. If you discern pride and arrogance in him that he's embarrassed to recheck whether his hearing was correct, go and look for another man of God to speak to you. Are we together now? I know there's a lady who came one time, I think from Port Harcourt, coming to confirm because a man of God described somebody, a fair person, and she had been waiting. And there was somebody who really loved God. When she came, I prayed for her and I said, I, I wish you a happy married life. And they are married now, happily married to the glory of God. She would have been waiting forever for, for a, a yellow person to appear. So, praise the Lord. Let's celebrate Jesus. hallelujah you see all these questions we have attempted reveal three things number one it is costly to be ignorant over spiritual things are we together it is costly just a little question and answer session but it has exposed us to a lot of things it is costly i trust that with this little question and answer session it has activated our appetite for more of god you see if you do not understand scripture, you will be deceived in many ways. You notice that every question I attempt to answer, I show you a scripture to support it. Because you cannot afford to answer questions with opinions. And you will not know God's opinion if you don't study. Study. Study to show yourself, the Bible says, study to show yourself approved. A workman that needed not to be ashamed. 
rightly dividing the word praise the lord psalms 82 from verse 5 says they know not neither will they understand he said they grow up in darkness and the earth is out of course so it is important for us to be good students of the word not religiously studying it but studying it with everything that we have hallelujah number two corporate fellowship is very important is part of the principles and the requirement for your spiritual growth you can see that a platform like this has afforded us an opportunity to know more and to learn a few things to strengthen our spiritual life psalm 133 how good and pleasant it is when brethren dwell together in unity it is like the oil that comes from the head of aaron right down to his bird and to his cat and all of that is yet dear god had commanded the blessing so it's very important corporate fellowship is important for our spiritual strengthening hallelujah and then number three ultimately it reveals to us the necessity of the person of the holy spirit worship team sang the song beautifully we're going to sing that song again and and then we'll sing that song that came i can't even remember what we sang but try to remember it worship team we'll sing those two songs again very beautifully the holy spirit this place is called koinonia is our intimacy with him and our partnership with him that affords us the opportunity to access light and access his wisdom the bible says ride prosperously because of truth right you will only prevail by the truth you know not the truth that is available the truth you know it can be available but if you do not know it you will still die there are still people going to hell whereas the price for our sin has been paid for hallelujah we are going to pray um, just a few minutes and we'll be done we are going to pray and ask the Lord very passionately very passionately to open up our spirits to open up our spirits very very important while seated just pray we're going to stand up but then i want us to pray while seated and talk to the lord some of us have seen this situation has revealed to some of us how clueless we are over spiritual things if you were to be asked some of these questions many of us see that this is like a a test those outside make sure you are praying at the back there outside at the window make sure you are participating in the prayer the Lord is with you right where you are. Make sure you are praying and say, Lord, please deliver me from spiritual ignorance. Deliver me from ignorance. Grant me access to the word. Grant me access to the word. Deliver me from spiritual ignorance. Lord, I want to be furnished, grounded in the truth. The Bible says that he gave unto some apostles and prophets and, and evangelists and pastors and teachers. It says for the equipping of the saints. The equipping of the saints. That they the saints now equipped will do the work of the ministry. To the end that we all will come into the fullness of the, the, the measure of the stature of Christ. Not being tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine. Lift your voice and pray. Say, Lord, in this time and age, in these end times, where there is a lot of error, there is a lot of confusion, I pray that I be delivered from spiritual ignorance. Lift your voice and pray. Deliver me, O oh God, from ignorance. Open my eyes to access light in the spirit. Deliver me, O oh God, from spiritual ignorance. Pray. Make sure you are praying. Deliver me, O oh God, from spiritual ignorance. It's dangerous in these days not to lack the knowledge that you need.
Number two, Lord, align my spirit in a way that I'll begin to touch realities in the realm of the spirit. Lift your voice and pray. Let there be a programming in my spirit. Let there be an alignment in my spirit, man. Have your way. I'm tired of wrong interpretation. I'm tired of interpreting spiritual realities in a wrong way. I'm tired of reading my Bible and not accessing the light and the power that I need. Pray. Align my spirit. I cry for an alignment upon my spirit, man. Have your way. Have your way. Everyone, please rise as we pray this very prayer point. It's important. Oh God, if ever you need a vessel, find one in me. Lift your voice and pray. Use me, oh God. Many of us have stopped praying that prayer. Use me for your glory. Lift your voice and pray. Lord, use me, use me, use me. I may not be a man of God, but make me a mighty vessel in your hands. Oh yes, have your way in my life. Have your way in my life. Use me for your glory. As an agent of deliverance. As an agent of transformation. As an agent of healings. Miracles, signs, wonders. Use me in the prophetic, oh God. Use me in the apostolic, oh God. Use me in the healing ministry. Take your place, take your place, take your place. Hey. Holy God, take your place, take your place, take your place. For your glory use me for your glory use me for your glory have your way have your way hallelujah hallelujah i like us to pray any gift of the spirit any dimension that once walked in you but for some reason has stopped working. I like you to pray and say, Lord, revive her. Let there be a restoration. Lift your voice and pray. I used to have dreams, but the dreams have disappeared. Lord, let it come back. I used to have encounters. I used to have ministration of angels. Oh God, my prophetic dimension was sharper than this something has happened lift your voice and pray restoration oh god restoration oh god restoration oh god restoration oh god restoration of the gifts of the spirit restoration of the wisdom of the spirit 
restoration of passion passion for God restoration of passion restoration of hunger spiritual seriousness hunger for Bible studies hunger for prayer hunger for fasting hunger for the house of God hunger to see his kingdom come take your place take your place pray it from your heart holy ghost take your place Hallelujah. Listen. Pay the price to discipline your spiritual atmosphere. Pay the price to discipline your spiritual atmosphere. Don't allow the things of the flesh pollute your spiritual atmosphere. It will destroy you, I tell you. Some of us is friends. I'm not teaching you to hate people. The character of the Christ is love. But you cannot give everybody access to pollute your environment with everything. No. Nevertheless, the foundation of the Lord standard sure. Have been this seal. Please don't say it does not matter. The true spirit of holiness. Let me tell you the truth. The true spirit of holiness is the atmosphere that brings the presence of God. The true spirit of holiness. Don't trivialize it. The true spirit of holiness is what creates the atmosphere of the spirit. Because he's called Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. There is a beauty that holiness brings. It's called the beauty of holiness. Culture your atmosphere. Take God seriously. No one leg in, one leg out and you are just playing around. Don't be careless with your life hallelujah i just sense a need that we should make this prayer again a final point because like samson there are people who have lost touch with certain virtues you receive certain things maybe in a meeting or in koinonia or somewhere or an impartation a man of god laid hands on you and activated spiritual possibilities but some of us you did not know how to fan it to flame there are some of us here the level of the prophetic you should be walking in now if you were consistent with god you would have been walking in notable levels but you are still at that level there are some of us the level of the teaching grace if you were only serious with the word you read your bible once in a month but look what you are doing imagine if you read it every day hallelujah he said cast me not away from your presence take not your spirit from me we need that restoration and we're going to pray make this prayer personal listen you know where you are slacking in the spirit don't feel condemned but you must sustain grace to catch up some of us is our prayer life there's really nothing left here some of us is our word life you are a prayer machine but your word content is low so there is wrong interpretation to your spiritual things hallelujah lift your voice and pray Lord, a restoration. Mention the area you want him to restore you. Lord, I need a restoration of your presence. I used to carry heavy weights of your presence. Everyone who came around me felt that presence. But for some reason, oh God, I've lost it. Pray. Restoration. Shabala bala da bala da bala da bala.
as I pray for you fire is going to come on a lot of people just in one minute there will be activations and impartations lift your hands father in the name of Jesus Christ I pray there are a number of people in this place that the fire must be restored through apostolic fire through prophetic fire at the count of three listen I want you to shout that name Jesus as you shout that name for many of you from tonight you will go back and the dreams will be restored for many of you right away the healing anointing comes lift your voice father i pray that in the next one minute let there be a mighty restoration and an impartation as your people shout that name i pray that your glory will fall on them right now one two three Receive it right now, right now, right now, right now. Receive it. My goodness, help them. That impartation, that impartation. Receive it right now. Right now in the name of Jesus. Receive it, receive it. Dreams, dreams, dreams. The Lord is activating dreams. Prophetic dreams. Symbolic dreams. restoration of healing power the healing anointing the healing anointing the healing anointing hallelujah the healing anointing is falling i don't know why god is talking to me about healing the healing anointing receive it right now lord where are they where are they where are they take it take it now 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 the healing virtue I release it from the spirit power to heal power to heal power to heal in the name of the Lord Jesus power to heal power to heal in the name of Jesus power to heal in the name of Jesus yeah. Yeah. I hear my spirit the gift of utterance utterance Lord where are those people like fire will come upon you some of you on your mouth literally utterance utterance I impart it right now right now right now utterance inside and outside fire is falling Mantles of utterance. of God. Hallelujah. Just one last one. And then we we'll take the altar call discernment this one will come on us 
Many of you don't know what discernment is. The ability to sustain capacity in the spirit. Father, in the name of Jesus, I stand by this apostolic anointing. Activate discernment in your people right now. At the count of three. One, two, three. Take it. Take it. Take it. Take it. Take it. Everywhere. Inside and outside. The ability to sense the impulses of the spirit realm. The impulses of the spirit realm. The ability to understand the language of God. The language of God. The language of God. standing there are people here who have never given their hearts to Jesus Christ probably you were invited here for the first time and there are still people here listen please don't be distracted those under the anointing just leave them please there are people here who are saying man of God I want to make it right with my maker tonight I love him I gave my heart to Christ but for some reason I found myself derailing and tonight I'm coming to tell him, Lord, I want to start afresh. I don't care whether you're a preacher or whatever. Make your way to the front right now. I want to pray with you. I want to pray with you. God bless you. There are people like that. Appreciate them as they're coming. God bless you. Don't be afraid. Don't be ashamed. God bless you, my dear. God bless you, my brother. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you. Bless you, sir. Bless you, ma. Clear the way for those coming outside. Koinonia, celebrate them. Come, keep coming. Keep coming. Keep coming. God bless you. Don't let anybody stop you. Keep coming. Those outside, clear the way for them. Keep coming. Don't let any devil stop you. Thank you so much for coming. This concerns your soul, your life, and everything. Lift your right hand and from the depth of your heart, I want you to say after me, Lord Jesus. Some of you, as you pray, the power of God, that hold of sin will leave you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I love you with all my heart. I come to you just as a child. I ask you to have mercy on me. Forgive my sins. I receive Jesus Christ into my life. Join them, please. From today, I declare that I have eternal life in my spirit. I'm a child of God, genuinely saved. From today, the power of sin, of Satan, and the flesh is broken over my life. I'm a new creation in the name of Jesus. Keep your hands lifted. Let me pray for you. Lord, I thank you for our brothers and sisters. We love them and we receive them into the fold. Lord, you know the challenges and the encumbrances that have stopped them from being passionate about the things of God. I pray tonight that they will go back with renewed strength. That in this place tonight, may they find strength. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Every habit, every spirit, every challenge that has held you bound, I cause it to its root in Jesus' name. May the Lord bless you and we welcome you into the greatest family. In the name of Jesus Christ. God bless you, ladies and gentlemen. Please follow the ushers waving their hands. They will have your information and will communicate to you. God bless you. Celebrate them, Koinonia.